Okay, this is part two video of data error detection and data error correction. Now in part one video, we looked at CRCs, cyclic redundancy checks, which is a data error detection protocol. And we learned how to calculate a 16-bit CRC checksum using the data bytes in the data packet. So here's our data packet, F881, and we calculated a 16-bit CRC checksum, one CED. And that checksum is tacked on to the end of the packet and sent along with the packet. Now in this video, we're going to look at FEC, that's forward error correction, and that's a data error correction protocol. And we want to send these bytes, 25, F2, 32, and B8. Now before we can send these bytes, we have to encode these bytes. We have to add on four more extra bits. Now these are parity bits or check bits. So 25 would become 257, F2 would become F29. So we add on these extra four bits onto each byte before they're sent. And at the receiving end, we actually could calculate if there's an error in the data. And if there's single bit errors, we could actually correct them without asking for a retry. So in this video, we're going to look how we could encode or calculate this four extra bits for each byte using a Hamming matrix. Okay, here's the Hamming code matrix that we're going to use in our FEC calculations. Now there's four bytes in the Hamming code matrix. So there's our first one, second one, third, and fourth. And I've written them out in binary so it's a little bit easier to understand what's going on. But in hex, the hex values are EC, D3, BA, and 75. Now the data byte that we want to encode is 2C, so we take that value 2C and we do a logical AND to each one of the Hamming code bytes. So 2C logical ANDed with EC, and then D3, then BA, then 75. So here's the calculation. So you see on the top line we have our Hamming code. So we'll have EC, D3, BA, and 75. And we're going to AND it with 2C. So that's our second line. So there's our result. There's our result for our four calculations. Now, now, we're not too interested in the value, but we want to look at how many ones are in each value. So if there's an odd number of ones, then we're going to give it a one value. And if there's an even number of ones, we'll give it a zero value. So in the first one, we have three ones. That's odd, so we'll give it a one. The second one are all zeros, and that turns out to be even, so we'll give it a zero. Third one has two ones, so that's even, so we'll give it a zero. And the fourth one has two ones, and that's even, so we'll give it a zero. So we have 1, 0, 0, 0, and in hex that works out to 8. So our data byte 2C will be encoded with 2C8. Now to, in a, on a microcontroller it's easy to do an AND function, but how do we calculate the even and odd amounts of 1's in each value? Well there's a couple of ways of doing that. We could actually add up how many 1's and divide by 2, and if there's no remainder we know it's even. But there's another way that I use. I, I exclusive OR all the bits in the value and that will give me either a, an odd or an even number of ones. Okay, here's one way to calculate if the number of ones in the value is even or odd. And we'll use the value of 3B. You can see here in binary, and if we count the uh, number of ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's, that's odd. So it's easy for us to determine, but how do we do that in the microcontroller? So we'll take the 3B value in, in binary and we'll put it in column form. So you can see it here, 00111011. And we start off with a 0, and 0 exclusive OR with 0 equals 0. Now we take that value and we put it over here. So 0 exclusive OR with 0 equals 0. And we take that value and we put it over here. 0 XOR 1 equals 1. And we put that value over here. We keep on doing that until we come to the very end. And the last bit equals 1. So it's odd. So it works out as an odd number of ones in, in the value 3B. Now we'll try 39, and there's the binary value. And you can see it's got 1, 2, 3, 4 ones, so we know it's even. So we'll put the binary value in a column form, and we'll do the same thing. So we start it with 0, 0 exclusive OR with 0 equals 0, and we put that value over here. 0 XOR 0 equals 0, put that value over here, ex exclusive OR with 1. We'll get a 1, put that value over here, and we do that all the way down to the bottom. And the last bit we get is 0, and that's equals even. So that's what we got on 3B. We got an even amount of 1s. So this technique is very easy to do on a microcontroller. Okay, here's some code that I wrote to run on my Nano for FEC calculations. Now it's written in fourth, it's compact, it's fast, and it's interactive. 
so I could enter values directly from my keyboard. Now there's two main words in this code, this parity question mark, and there's check bits. Now parity question mark takes a byte value that you enter from the keyboard, and it will return a zero if there's an even amount of ones, or it will return a one if there's an odd amount of ones in the byte value. So I start off with a mask, it's a single bit mask, and I initialize it to 128, and I take that mask and I end it with my, uh, my byte value, and it tests to see if it's a one or a zero, and that's my first zero that I'm gonna exclusive or, my first, uh, my first bit. And then I'm gonna go into a loop, and each time I go through the loop, I'm gonna shift right my mask, so it's gonna move down uh, my, my byte, and it's gonna test each bit, and it's gonna do an exclusive or, of the last calculation. So uh, at the very end, I'm gonna get a zero if my byte value has an even amount of ones, and I'll get a one if my byte value has an odd amount of ones. And I use this parity question mark code in my next word called check bits. Now in check bits, I enter uh, a byte value like 2C, and it'll give me back 2C8. It'll give me back the encoded FEC byte. So I start off with my, uh, my byte that I enter, like 2C, and I and it with all my Hamming matrix. You can see the four bytes there, my four uh, Hamming matrix bytes, and I and each one. And then it checks the parity, so it's using the word up here, parity question mark. So it's using it here as checking the parity. And if the parity is one, which is odd, you'll add eight into the encode. That's a, that's a register. This will, this will give me my four bits. These are my four bits that I add on, my encode bits that I add on to the, my byte. And at the very end, I multiply my byte by 16, and I add it to my four bits, and that will give me my final, my final output, which will, be, which will be 12 bits. So if I enter 2C, I'll get 2C8 when I run the check bits code. So actually, we'll run this code on my Nano, and we'll see how it works. Okay, I have my code up and running on my Nano, and we could test out the parity question mark code. That's gonna tell us if there's an odd or even number of ones in the byte that we give it. So I've given it the byte hex 3b, and then I typed in parity question mark, and we'll see what it returns. It gives us a one. So that means there's an odd number of ones in the byte value 3b. Now in our example, we use also 39. So we could try 39. 39 parity question mark and see where that returns. That gives us a zero. So there's the even amount of ones in the byte value 39. So now we can check out the check bits. So in our main example, we used uh, hex value 2C and we could, we could do the check bits and it returns 2C8. Okay, now we have to do some decoding. So we have a byte that was sent to us, 2C8. Now we have to decode that byte to check to see if there's any errors. So we use a decoding Hamming matrix, which you can see here. So we added on four more bits to the original matrix. So now our Hamming code matrix is EC8, D34, BA2, 751. So now we take our code that we received, 2C8, and we end it with the decode Hamming matrix. So we see EC8 ended with 2C8, we get a value. And we do all four, like we did before. And then we look at the, uh, the parities. We see how many ones there are in the, in the values, in the, into the answers that we got. And if they're all even, all zeros, then there's no errors. Then we could say the 2C8 is correct. So the data 2C is what we're going to use is correct. So, but what happens if we have an error? So here we have 2C8 in binary. And now I'll say this bit here gets change from a 0 to a 1. That's bit 6. So it will become 6C8 will be the data that we're going to be getting in. So we'll run that through it. We'll run 6C8. So we have our, our uh, decode Hamming matrix, our four, our four uh, values, and we end it with 6C8. Now we get a different value. We get 1101 for an even and odd number of 1s. So now we take that 1101 and we look at the, at the matrix and we look for the column 1101. And here it is, 1101. And that's in bit location, bit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's bit 6. So if we go down to our 
error code that we got. Now we look at the code 6C8 and we go over to bit 6. So we know that this, this 1 here should be changed to a 0. And if we change it to a 0, then we'll get the correct value of 2C8 and we can pull out the data 2C. Okay, now you know how to encode and decode data for forward error correction. And you can go through some of the examples I showed you on this video with pen and paper. And if you want, you could use the Windows calculator. If you look into the Windows calculator, it actually has a programming type that will do logic calculations. The last thing that we're going to look at is interleaving. You can see here. So this is the data that we want to send in binary. So instead of sending it 1, 2, 3, 4 by rows, we send it by columns. So we send this column, then this one, then this one. That way we're in interleaving the data. So as the data is being sent, if there's any errors, most likely there will be single bit errors. Then we could use the four error correction to solve our problems.